。好，接下来呢，第三场的主题演讲，我们聚焦在以前瞻科技 （Supercharge） 智慧制造。面对快速转变的产业环境 ，AI 已经成为一股变革力量。那么，连接营运技术还有数位决策的关键桥梁，引领智慧工厂迈向更高效、更灵活与永续的方向。那我们非常荣幸呢，要邀请到的是长期推动智慧制造与永续策略的专家，台湾西门子张和西总裁。张总裁呢，拥有非常丰富的国际经验，深耕 AI 与 OT 的整合应用，加速制造业的数位转型与永续发展。那让我们用热烈的掌声来欢迎张总裁。好，谢谢。嗯、um, ，不好意思，我的中文不太呃不太太太好 ，so I speak in English if okay for you、um,。So when I got the invitation to speak here today, I of course ask ChatGPT what should I talk about, and、uh, it asked back where is the presentation. I said it's in Taiwan, and then it said okay, you should talk about industrial AI because industrial AI. For Taiwan, being one of the leaders in manufacturing, is the one tool which will secure future growth and wealth of the country.、Um, before I dive into my presentation, I want us to pause for a moment and to consider something.、Um, in today's fast-paced world of smart manufacturing, really fast-evolving technology. There is this buzzword hanging around AI every day. We see it in the news, but I want us to think about another question:、um, Which other technologies are actually needed in order to allow AI to develop its full impact in the real and physical world? Because only then we can manipulate the outcome of. The simulation which AI is doing, and this is much more than just AI. So this is also about which branch of AI shall we look at?、Um, which problems do we want to solve? For which purpose do we want to solve these problems? And、um, so, if you allow me for the, in the next twenty minutes to explore this a little bit, so what is truly behind intelligent, resilient, and scalable? Smart manufacturing. Okay,、uh, one back. Yes. So AI is everywhere. I mean, since ChatGPT, everyone is using LLMs on the mobile phone. It's really a hype around、uh, LLMs.、Um, however.、Um, although it grabs all our attention. The real impact, from my point of view, is coming from industrial AI. And what is industrial AI? Industrial AI is combining AI models with engineering libraries, combining AI models with manufacturing domain know-how, in order to really solve、uh, the problems in the real world which we have. And、um, sorry. <laughs> so. Before we basically 
come to solving these problems, we need to take a step back and look at what is actually hindering us today to apply really AI at its full scale. I have here some numbers with me from Gartner, Boston Consulting Group, KPMG, saying, for example, that 40% uh, of uh, companies think that AI is trustworthy, which means 60% um, think it's not trustworthy yet. Um, a staggering 92% of companies replied that they are lacking AI-skilled experts, and I'm not talking about software development engineers, um, here we talk about data scientists, for example, or engineers who know how to deploy AI in a real manufacturing environment. And only 16% of the companies in this uh, recent research replied that they are actually achieving their AI-related goals. So in this kind of uh, background, it is important to have a... Um, to have a trusted technology partner by your side. And um, in Siemens, <clears throat> we are already dealing with kind of AI technology for a very long time. So, as you can see behind me, there already in 1974, there was a system developed, a language um, uh, 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 processing system, natural language processing system, uh, as a Q&A system, which is actually before I was even born. And through the years, Siemens has continuously developed and deployed AI technologies. So, for example, in the 1990s, already with neural networks to solve very complex linear optimization problems and questions when it comes to gas turbine materials or when it comes to the operation of large steel plants. In the 2010s, uh, we have uh, deployed AI models for analysis of MRI and CT pictures in healthcare to quickly diagnose uh, problems, uh, uh, cancer for example. And most recently with ChatGPT, there was really an explosion of innovation happening. Um, at the moment Siemens has around 1,400 AI experts. We have three AI labs. The biggest one is in Berkeley in California. We are investing 6.3 billion euro in R&D, a large chunk of it at the moment is going into AI by now, and out of our more than 40,000 active patents which we have globally, more than 1,800 are related to AI. So Siemens is truly um, at the forefront of industrial AI. Now, <clears throat> at Siemens we believe that um, AI is a transformative force especially in industry applications, helping us to enhance efficiency, um, helping us to drive innovation and to promote sustainability. Um, but it is also uh, one of our core beliefs that AI needs to be dealt with with purpose. We call it AI with purpose. Why? Because it's important to develop and deploy AI in a responsible way. Uh, so. Uh, to solve uh, real-world problems today and tomorrow with responsibly deployed AI, AI applications. Um, there are three guiding principles for us which are important to notice when it comes to AI deployments in the industrial space. First of all, AI needs to be industrial grade. What do I mean with that? Um, in an LLM you have hallucinations and uh, usually the impact of a wrong answer is not so big. In an industry environment there is, depending on the application, no room for error. And uh, so in an industry environment, um, AI which is deployed there needs to follow stringent standards and also needs to fulfill very strict reliability requirements. Um, the principle number two is that AI in an industrial space needs to be accessible to everyone, uh, not only to a small group of experts. Only then we can unlock and unleash the full potential of AI to enhance our manufacturing productivity, because then we can talk to machines in natural language and machines can talk to us back in natural language. It's actually already a reality. I, I will show you later. And principle number three, is AI needs, especially industrial AI, needs strong ecosystems. Um, it's just too complex for any one player in the market 
to cover everything. So we are relying on different expertises, different domain know-hows, and we need to work together in an ecosystem to drive AI application forward. And this is exactly what Siemens is doing already for a couple of years. Um, so I brought four examples here with me. For example, NVIDIA. Uh, the, the guy next to Jensen is my boss, <laughs> Roland Busch. Uh, we have a very long-standing relationship with NVIDIA. NVIDIA has the Omniverse and Siemens has a lot of engineering libraries. Combining this is creating what we call the industrial metaverse, which is uh, helping engineers in manufacturing environments to uh, dive into immerse, immersive real-time visualization of any production process already today, helping them to optimize production processes. With AWS, we are already for a very long time partnering, and uh, we are, for example, partnering with the Bedrock uh, uh, no-code platform of AWS, allowing pick-and-drop uh, development of AI application on Bedrock systems. With Google Cloud, we are collaborating um, by um, allowing our customers uh, to manipulate data in, in Google Cloud with machine learning uh, engineering suits and engineering tools provided by Siemens, which are seamlessly integrated on the Google Cloud system. And with Microsoft, <clears throat> based on Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI, I think most of you use Microsoft Copilot. There is something called Industrial Copilot, which Siemens has developed together with Microsoft, allowing exactly what I just described, the human-machine communication based on natural language so that someone who doesn't have programming knowledge can still program a machine by just talking to the machine and let the LLM do the translation work. This is already deployed to more than 100 large customers globally and working and up and running. Yeah, maybe that's easier. Exactly, thank you, the green one. Um, now I want to very high level explain to you actually what I made in my first statement that we also have to look at the technologies which enable the use of AI. And what you see here is a very high level industrial AI architecture where we see here actually the point where something is produced on a machine. And this machine is controlled by PLCs, programmable logical controllers. And there are some edge devices connected to it, sensors for example meters and these edge devices uh, collect data and this data is then via a connectivity layer and connectivity meaning communication is becoming more and more important especially when we talk about real-time AI application we have to focus on very low latency communication we are this layer it's then sent into a database in a cloud and then AI and uh, Mr. Hong just mentioned the topic of digital twin of the car manufacturer. I think it's one of our models they are using. I think I know the car manufacturer. And then this digital twin is created, which is a real representation in the digital space of the real world. And then AI can be used to manipulate that digital twin to optimize uh, production processes, for example, to opti optimize also designs of a product, to optimize um, maintenance cycles, for example. And then the output is then sent via an integration layer to the application and then again to manipulate the machine to change whatever has been created in the digital world in the real world. And this is then the real impact of AI on everything what we do. It's a whole ecosystem. And it's not only software, it's the combination of software and hardware. And this is also the strength of Taiwan because when you look at all everything what is written in the brackets, this, a lot of this is made in Taiwan. And you need not only the software, you need everything which is on that slide in order to have AI develop a real impact. Now, what you also need is data. So Siemens is pursuing a very clear um, strategy to enhance data provision in order to optimize outcomes by AI manipulation. We have uh, recently acquired two big players in the market, Altair and Dotmatics, uh, making us the most comprehensive industrial AI company on the planet. 
And now what does it mean for Taiwan? So how can we use all of this to supercharge manufacturing in Taiwan? Now, first of all, um, as I just said, we have AI technologies and we have digital twin technologies. Anything which is produced in the design phase, when you design something, you already decide 80% of the footprint of whatever is produced, of the resource need, of the uh, CO2 footprint, of the cost. So combining the digital twin with AI leads to a more sustainable um, environment and to a sustainable growth um, in Taiwan using these digital twin technologies. And so here, these technologies are helping Taiwan to fulfill the Jiayuan Jiantan strategy and to deal with the shortages we face on the island when it comes to water, electricity, workforce, talent and, and land by combining the real and the digital worlds. And in Taiwan specifically, you remember that uh, person just now, Roland, my boss, here with Yang Liu. So we have, for example, uh, a strong partnership with Honhai, uh, where we help Honhai to standardize manufacturing throughout their global operations using smart manufacturing, AI-enabled technologies from Siemens. And for example, I just bring a couple of examples here. With Quanta, we have upgraded the Quanta production lines with a very state-of-the-art, we call it Sematic Robot Pick AI system, which is really bringing production efficiency for Quanta for the server assembly to a next level, um, and also bringing the quality to a next level. With Merck, for the semiconductor industry, Merck has built a huge special chemical plant in Kaohsiung, uh, called the Jade Project, and here they are deploying a combination of AI and digital twin technologies from Siemens in order to optimize the commissioning of uh, the production processes in the plant, and thereby they are already realizing 50% uh, reductions in try run times and 25% reductions in time to market. And uh, Taiwan also has a big machine building industry in Taichung. A lot of machine builders are there. And here, just a very simple example of how today already AI technology is used to enhance significantly productivity for these companies. I brought two examples with me, Hota Industrial and Goodway Machinery from Taichung. And uh, they have deployed a system called Siemens Adaptive Control and Monitoring System, which basically is constantly controlling the status of the abrasion tools in the machine and then adjusting um, the tool location according to the abrasion, maximizing output and minimizing throughput during the production process. Now, before I end my presentation, um, one question is also important, as I said uh, in the beginning, which we should discuss. I, le I read a lot in the newspaper about, oh, AI is destroying a lot of jobs, and uh, AI is actually like, you know, um, a very destructive force when it comes to society. But honestly, when we look at these um, uh, developed uh, countries, like also Taiwan, and you see the uh, shortage of talent, you see the shortage of workforce, you see the topic of birth rate, for example, then for me, it's very clear, we have to speed up and accelerate the usage of AI, especially in an industrial context, in order to keep growing our economy and in order to keep our wealth and in order for having a sustainable, wealthy, happy future. So, thank you very much for uh, listening and for uh, going through that thought process with me. And uh, with that, I would like to end my presentation and uh, I wish you all uh, good conference uh, in the further course. Thank you.